Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So today we're going to work on this little, uh, it's an inset holder. It's guitar shaped. And on the other side, it's got all the little lines and stuff like it's a guitar. But uh, I thought the back of it was kind of a cool shape to do a design on. So... Um, I might do the front, but the front's only really got just a little spaces here uh, because it, it really runs the most of the front surface as the guitar chords or whatever. So anyways, I thought, I thought let's do a video. Um, I was recently speaking to uh, somebody out in New Zealand so uh, shout out to uh, Nathaniel Patterson I think is your last name uh, so shout out to Nate out there in New Zealand uh, he let me know that there's a community of folks that watch my videos way out there so I thought that was super cool sorry I'm having a fight with the cat and she's down there playing with stuff So this is going to be a real-time video and what I'm going to try to do is just work with this shape and see what I can do. So here we got, we got a nice open area on top. So let's try to see what we can do. And enhance that shape. Now, some folks dig these real-time videos, some folks don't. Uh, they're usually a little too slow for people. But I try to mix it up as much as I can. I am using the Kafka number zero uh, scrolling brush, but I still use them for my old school and traditional designs. I got so used to using them that if I pick up a sword, it, it feels it feels uh, foreign to me. And I keep saying I'm gonna get back on the sword and and uh, get used to the sword, but I never do. I just I want to say I'm spoiled with these, but there's a lot that you can do with a sword that you can't do with these scrollers. So I, I really need to get back on it. I'm thinking this might be a single color design. But we'll see. <clears throat> Every time I make these videos, kind of rush myself because I feel like there's too much dead time and people are going to turn off but when I do that sometimes like I'll make mistakes or I won't like the design in the end so I gotta I gotta find a, a good medium you know you put the pressure on yourself to make something that looks cool But at the same time, you kind of want it to be entertaining for the people that are watching. <clears throat> this little incense burner uh, was a gift from um, my brother's wife. She likes to go shopping and find little stuff. 
and um, I've been known to strum a guitar here and there. It's been a while, but every now and then I do it. I'm a big fan of uh, Willie Nelson songs. Uh, there's a there's a song you can look it up that I used to like to perform uh, called Hello Walls. Um, something about them nice simple melodies is uh, is what used to draw me to the guitar. And Willie's got some really nice songs. I actually thought that was uh, written by somebody named, I think, Farron Young. But it was actually a Willie Nelson song. I found that out through um, watching this tribute. Uh, I think it was like on a country music uh, channel. And I don't have cable, so this was on... This was on um, when we went on vacation to the beach. Uh, we happened to put it on that channel real fast. And there was like a concert going on with BB King and and uh, I want to say Bob Dylan and like Lyle Lovett and all these random people. And it was a tribute to Willie Nelson, I think. To I think he was turning sixty years old or something. Some of y'all might have seen the concert. I didn't watch all of it. But it was, it was cool to see. And I actually like the way Willie sings them songs better than half them folks. Uh, they just don't put the same cadence and the same feeling that he does to, to a lot of them songs. <clears throat> but it was fun to watch. And not too long ago, I, I purchased, well, I think I did a video on it, actually. Uh, I purchased the orange, um, I think it was like a Caro Robelli or some cheap brand. Um, and I pinstriped it on, on here. <clears throat> and it was a three-quarter size guitar. And I thought it would play the same as a regular size guitar, but they actually, I think... I want to say the tuning is a little different, or the scale is a little different, so it threw me off, and I've been thinking about trading it out. <clears throat> so again, I'm just trying to fill the space here, considering the shape of the guitar. I did draw myself some little grid lines there just to try to keep uh, keep my symmetry up even though that line just cut in really far <clears throat> let's fix that you may not be able to see but this has a nice big gap this one the gap got closed in pretty quickly so if you don't fix them problems early if you do decide to add another color, um, you're going to end up with problems. So I just dip in the mineral spirits. That's now wet with mineral spirits. And I'll just wipe that off. Now, to be honest, I don't know what that could have done to this background, but whatever. This is the bottom of the incense holder. Now, I like what I was doing up there. The rest of it's all kind of eh. So let's see if I can redeem myself. <clears throat> All 
are just some moves, um, some like go-to moves that you just get tired of seeing, and you do them anyways, and you don't feel like why why would you do that again? <laughs> but I don't know, maybe it's force of habit. Um, just gotta really change your thinking sometimes if you want to come up with something new. I know that's something that uh, a lot of folks struggle with is getting out of that loop of the same design, same style, same stuff. And it's definitely something that I struggle with. <clears throat> Let's see here. Cause see with me I don't really as I've, as I've said many times before I don't do a whole lot of cars I don't do a whole lot of motorcycles um, I basically just sit here and try to focus on making a better design if I'm sitting here by myself you know and, and not videotaping and and, and uh, just working on a panel I'm legitimately just trying to outdo my last design and I think that's where you know Possibly where I get a lot of folks that see my stuff, dig it or whatever. So it's like I'm always out, trying to outdo my last design. And it really, it really falls down to your design elements. Just the little things, the little moves. How, how, which way you went, which way you didn't go. Like that looks super cool to me. Just that little top part. You know, this part, I, I, I feel like I've done that a million times. So it's just a uh, just a matter of trying to get out of your own your own loop. Yeah, I made a I made a uh, like a little story on uh, Instagram, um, kind of compiling the different uh, countries that I get uh, in contact with through through these videos, through um, Facebook, through Instagram, and it's kind of mind blowing how far out uh, these videos have gone. And uh, you know, sometimes you hear you hear some. Uh, some some of the fellas that have been around a long time and they say oh you know why is it that you have uh, the following and, and such and such doesn't you know you could throw out any name of, of somebody that's been pinstriping for 40 50 years and you know my thought is I, I kind of people watched me grow on this channel um, I started making videos at, at year number two so there's there's some of y'all have been around since the very beginning and you've seen the progress from the very beginning and I try to focus on um, keeping up with these videos I try to make sure that I don't fall behind on it and I think I think the folks that do try for the most part, uh, n not a lot of people have kept up with it. It's hard enough to, to do the art, let alone uh, focus on trying to create videos about it. 
but I've always enjoyed it. And uh, I enjoy the feedback that I get from people and it's, you know, I'm able to help, help some folks out, learn how to do it as well. So it's been rewarding in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> and I think it all just boils down to consistency. Um, I, I make videos consistently. <laughs> I've not been real good at posting every week or every month or, or anything like that, but if, if I make three videos in one week, they're going up. So sometimes I, I'll make a video every night for two, three nights. I've never been real good at like holding on to them and say every Monday or every every first Friday or stuff like that. Like Nubs, Nubs is real good about his Pinstripe Tuesdays. Um, and that's actually that's actually really good for people to look forward to. But I just, I've never been real good about that. So when I get a chance, I sit down and I'll make a video. Uh, like tonight, everybody's asleep. It's like 5 a.m. I guess not tonight anymore, it's morning time. And it could be one of the reasons why y'all get this kind of half-whispered voice. Trying not to wake up everybody in the house. Kind of accidental A ASMR or whatever that's called. <laughs> I'm a fairly quiet person. I've never liked, uh, I've never much cared for loud environments, loud people. There's a time and place for everything though. I try to stay low key. So I am using um, Alpha Enamel uh, Sunny Boys Imitation Gold. Um, to be honest, I don't know if they're still using the folks, the artist names on the paint. Um, I'm unsure what's up with that. I don't know if it was like a introduction, introductory thing that they were doing. I do, I do see still some people's names on there, but I have noticed some names drop off. I, I don't know what what that's all about um, I am curious about it but I, I really like this color it's it's almost like a kind of a mustard mustard yellow Now, I will say this is a little higher than this one, but it actually looks okay. I don't think this little guitar shape is perfect. I mean, none of it's going to be perfect, but you want to do your best. That's one thing uh, um, Nate asked me about. Um, you know, if you don't get stuff real perfect, is that something you struggle with? And that's absolutely something that I struggle with, I think. Uh, I think all pinstripers are going to struggle with that in some some way, shape, or form. And if it's something real, real, real crazy that I did on one side, you know, you could pre-draw the the other side to at least give you an idea of where to go, where not to go. Like that line there. If I was really concerned about it, I can get a pencil and just kind of draw that one out just to make sure I hit the. I kind of hit the area that I want for example 
grab this pencil and just go like, oh, that's about where I want to be. All right? And I get my paint. And it gives me a better idea. That way I'm not just eyeballing it. And over time you get better at it. I don't know if the camera stopped recording or if I just wigged out and looked at it funny, but I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to see a little edit there. So, I think I still picked up right where I was. So I like the idea of, I don't do it a lot, but of lines that like, they don't cross through, they almost look like they're crossing behind. So I'm going to give that a shot here. I'm going to go like this. Try to follow it. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's almost like it's cutting behind the other one. And some folks say, well, why did you go in or go out? I, you know, sometimes I just, it's second nature, you know? Now, this ends about right here. So let's try to go the same route. And you try to make the same arch can <clears throat> I mean I'm liking what I'm doing it's not too bad Let's see if we can come back this way with it. The other thing I struggle with is um, uh, a fella named Jim always asks, you know, when do you know when it's done? When do you know when to stop? And for me, that's also a difficult thing. I have a tendency of wanting to fill in every nook and cranny and not thinking about negative space so much. Because sometimes the openness gives it room to breathe and I'm real bad about not doing that. I think I'm just going to put something maybe small. Well, let me fix this here first. Maybe something in here. See how I did that part? I think I might do something similar on the bottom. Just give it a little, like a widow's peak. I think that's what they call it. I don't know if you hear my cat, but he's back there meowing. 
singing the songs of his people. And I'll just connect this here at the bottom. Such. I kind of want to put something in there. Maybe like one of these I could put in there. Oh, see folks, I don't know if you can tell, but that there is a hair lost. All pinstriping brushes lose hair. Some of them lose a lot. Some of them lose a little bit. Not a lot you can do about it. Um, it's just part of the part of the process. There's some brushes, man. The moment you get them, they just never stop losing hair. And there's some that, if I feel like they lose the weak hairs, and you end up with almost a unique in between size like it started off as a number whatever like say you had a number two and the next step would be a number one but you lose enough hairs to get like a like a 1.5 you end up with this kind of in between in between size couple of little teardrop shapes to extend out. Now I'm going to squeegee out uh, this brush with a popsicle stick. I'm going to squeegee out that paint. I'm going to use the bottom of the, of the paintbrush for a couple of dots. I'm also cleaning off the brush just just to not have it gunked up with uh, dried paint. Just a quick rinse. <clears throat> so now that has paint on it. Put a couple little choice dots wherever you want. Uh, like I said, sometimes you can get crazy with dots and takes away from the art sometimes it's just the right amount again hard to say let's see here maybe I'll put one here here and also you want to be careful with uh, your round shapes and your triangle shapes and because uh, Pinstriping, you, you have a tendency of sometimes making faces and you don't mean to make a face. But a lot of folks would be like, oh, I see a face in that. Or some folks would say, oh, I see five different faces in that. So people see what they want with it. Um, I kind of, when I was a kid, grew up uh, doodling kind of abstract uh, designs. So when I when I found pinstriping, it almost was was a was a nice fit. Because even as a kid, people would be like, "Well, what is that?" And then I never had a response because it was just lines to me. And even with this, you know, uh, folks that don't know what pinstriping is, which is a lot of people, you know, they'll ask you, "Well, what is that?" And it's, it's just pinstriping. It's just designs. 
and the general public does not get it. They don't know the history behind the craft. And they don't know its origins, so there, there's not much for them to admire. Um, versus, say, a landscape or a horse or a whatever. A fruit bowl painted in oil. <laughs> they know what a fruit bowl looks like. But the general public does not know about pinstriping. I'd say, ooh, I don't know. If I had to guess, 20% of the general public knows what pinstriping is. And there you have it, folks. I think it'll come out pretty good. I think the first, the first clip was 21 minutes. Uh, this clip was about 10 minutes, so I think it took me 30 minutes total to do that. Uh, this thing's... I don't know, maybe seven, eight inches. Let's see. Nope, 10 inches, almost 11. It's four and a half at its widest point. And let's see if I can slide this to where you can get a, a head on look at it. I did put down tape so it doesn't slide on me that's another thing if you're just getting started with this craft um, do what you can and not chase around your panels because it's no fun if you got to hold it down and chase it and all that it's hard to get the color it almost looks like white but it's actually a, a pretty rich yellow. It's almost like a mustard yellow. Oh, here, I'll show you what the front looks like. I might do the front on another video. But that's the back. Uh, thank you all for sticking around with me. Thank you all for watching the videos. And uh, make sure you to like, uh, share these videos, subscribe, and all that. And I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.